welcome. Hello again, uh, David Martinez with the CAO office. Uh, Robin Simone. Here, you can each have your own microphone. There you go. Robin Strong, she, her, hers, uh, County Sustainability Manager. Marie Bowman Davis, she, her, hers, Public Health Division Manager and local appointed Public Health Administrator. Thank you for having us here today. We'll go as quickly as we can. Actually, we kind of caught up on time, so we're doing okay. So here's an overview of today's presentation. I'll briefly review the recent board focus on climate change. After that, we'll review some key terms on climate action. Then we'll share information about county work currently underway way addressing climate change in our organization and the community. We'll highlight connections to public health in this space. And then I'll share background and options for climate action planning and we'll wrap up with some next steps. <clears throat> so this timeline highlights the board's recent discussion and actions on climate coordinated with our Office of Sustainability. April 2020 was the very first board Earth Day proclamation, which acknowledged climate change and environmental justice for the first time. The August 2021 roundtable featured a joint clean water services and county presentation on climate focused work and challenges. In November 2021, the board adopted the county energy management policy, which outlines operational practices focused on climate and energy. In April 2022, sustainability presented about the development of an equity focused internal sustainability and climate strategic plan. And that's where the board requested a pivot to focus on community climate planning. Then in July of this year, Sustainability staff presented about climate action planning and local plan examples. Um, the board requested information on county climate focused work that impacts our community to present today, in addition to scope options for a Washington County climate plan and advisory group. And here we are in November. So our purpose today is to inform your board um, about the departmental climate work that's happening at the county, as well as scope options for a climate plan and advisory committee. We'll also discuss the potential for climate project collaboration with our public health team. And our goal today will be to ensure your board is informed about current climate work and opportunities for alignment. In the context of today's discussion, the scoping is very high level and foundational. We're sharing the boundaries of projects, um, looking at best practices, providing an overview of the financial and staffing resources needed to conduct this type of project, timelines, deliverables, community engagement, and types of advisory groups that you may want to consider. We're not planning to get into the details of specific strategies, actions, or goals to include in a plan, or ask for any decisions at this point. So this is an expanded overview of the terms we shared last time we presented to your board. An updated climate action plan key terms document is included in today's board packet. I wanna make sure we're all on the same page and clear on the various aspects of the project we're discussing today. A few key terms that I want to highlight are a greenhouse gas inventory. This involves quantifying the emissions uh, using documented standard data collection and analysis. This is the basis for all climate action plans and can be done at the organizational and community scale. Mitigation includes those actions that reduce emissions to address the source of climate change and lessen the severity of climate impacts. And adaptation involves making changes to our current processes to help us live with the impacts of a changing climate or adjust to the new conditions we're seeing. Are there any questions before I move on? Not your name. Great. So I'm going to turn it over to David next. 
Yeah, I just want to say a few words uh, to introduce this next part. Again, David Martinez uh, with CAO office. Um, one of the um, highlights of this process in returning to the board and providing uh, more information is to share uh, the work that is currently happening countywide within departments around climate action. And so um, part of your packet is a inventory and Robin will describe uh, that um, more in detail, but what was clear is that climate action work is currently happening within the county. Um, it's internal and external, and I think part of our learning is that when we talk about climate action and the uh, need to move forward is to also recognize the departments that are currently as part of their services and programs and their activities um, have climate action as one of their goals. And as a result, and um, just to be clear, uh, as far as um, the adjustment in this presentation, uh, we're happy that Marie is here with us because part of this process, we learned about the opportunity with public health. So with that, I'll just turn it over to Rob. Thanks, David. So currently, county departments are working to address the impacts of a changing climate, to plan for a future climate action, and to respond to climate-driven events. Um, in today's board packet, we've included a Climate Action Overview 2022 document that includes the latest data we have available, showcasing key climate strategies and programs underway, as well as future opportunities. Development of the overview required cooperation and input from all county departments to highlight this important work. Our team organized it into actions that are operational, such as office energy use and business travel. Those that are felt directly in the community, like the addition of sidewalks and community waste prevention. And those that have both operational and community components, uh, for example, county procurement. So Commissioner Willie had some questions about this overview. So I'm gonna insert um, the uh, responses uh, here. So you have that background information. Um, first, how much does TriMet Pass cost program cost the county and how much is the program utilized by employees? Washington County spent $177,203 in the current fiscal year on passes for eligible employees. Um, that equates to $105.14 per pass for 1,672 employees. Um, we don't have ridership data for 2022 yet, but we're working to get that right now. Um, in 2019, so pre-COVID, hard to know how this equates, but 11% of all employee commute trips were via transit. This program helps meet state and federal requirements for clean air, meets the goals in our employee commute options trip, trip reduction plan, and provides an equity benefit. The second question that he had was what is toxic e-waste in the waste section? Our overview noted that the county manages electronic waste through a recycling and repurposing organization. Electronics are made with valuable materials that can be recycled into new products or refurbished, However, they also contain toxic materials such as lead, cadmium, and mercury. So by e-cycling, we're protecting our health by keeping these toxics out of the environment and landfill. Um, so the, these examples that I just discussed um, and in the document provide um, clear information about the county climate work that's, that the county has control over and that meshes with the current county priorities and funding and capacity. This work may provide structure, strategies, and data for climate plans, and it can be built upon to meet future climate goals. The focus areas in the document and listed here are commonly included in climate action plans as areas that are the most meaningful for mitigating and addressing climate issues, though we realize there are additional areas not highlighted, such as natural systems. We also recognize that the county is working on many state-mandated programs, long-term regional efforts and other collaborative projects that can support climate positive actions. So our public health division manager, Marie Bowman Davis, will share examples of those in the next few slides. Thank you. Um, so this slide on the left-hand side includes uh, an image of the cover and the main topics on the right that were available in our regional climate and health report published in 2021. 
and it was co-authored by Washington County Public Health staff. I understand this report was referenced uh, in the July 12th work session uh, by Eric Lopreet, our sustainability and education coordinator. So thank you, Eric. Um, uh, as stated in the report, uh, the impact of climate change on health vary significantly by individual characteristics and community conditions. Black people, indigenous people, Latinx people, and other people of color disproportionately experience the impacts of climate change. This is because climate change interacts with and worsens inequities in our communities that are often shaped by racism. Throughout this report, the groups most impacted either due to individual or community vulnerability are outlined for each health impact area. Uh, this report is also an example of the relationship between public health to climate change and health equity. For example, local public health authorities, such as Washington County, Oregon, are statutorily responsible under Oregon Administrative Rule 333-014-0550 to accept reports and investigate reportable diseases, disease outbreaks, or epidemics. So when we have climate events and we need to stand up heating and cooling shelters, uh, our local public health administrator and our public health department and our programs, including emergency, I'm sorry, our programs support emergency management and housing. That This includes our programs such as public health emergency preparedness, disease control and prevention, environmental health, research analytics, informatics and data, emergency medical services, our strategy program, and our medical examiner's office. Next slide. Great, thank you. So on the left here, you have um, a graphic of the new governmental framework that was approved for public health activities throughout Oregon. This was approved by the Oregon State Legislature in 2015 under House Bill 3100. The right briefly summarizes the legislation and the, some, of, some of the related statutes. So uh, as stated in the Public Health Modernization Manual that aligns with this framework, a modernized public health system will provide core public health functions and maintain the flexibility needed to focus on new health challenges, which include infectious, emerging infectious diseases, climate change, threats from man-made and natural disasters, and an increase and chronic diseases. This legislative public health modernized framework and inclusion of climate secured Oregon's place as a national leader. Our state investments in public health modernization have been incremental and have not reached full funding yet. However, in this current biennium 21-23, Washington County Public Health received increased funding for both local and regional public health modernization efforts. This funding has supported investments in our foundational capabilities, as well as our programs, and has also provided us necessary financial resources to engage with and support community. So what kind of staffing has this provided us? This year, we've been able to add approximately a dozen staff uh, through this modernization funding, uh, including senior program coordinators, epidemiologists, data analysts, communication specialists, uh, and these staff are actively engaging internally and externally uh, to collaborate, uh, to prepare three interrelated plans, which include metrics and accountability structures, our all hazards preparedness plan, our climate adaptation plan, and our health equity action plan. They also have programmatic responsibilities too. All of these plans are under development, including the climate plan, and are referencing documents such as the EPA's public health hazards prepared, sorry, uh, public health adaptation strategies. Um, and we are looking for policy options, uh, including but not limited to mitigation. Uh, we also have a public health informatics supervisor that's supporting a Metro Technical Advisory Committee. Last thing I'll say is it important to note that public health modernization funds uh, cannot supplant county general funds. However, we have been using them to expand staffing capacity uh, as well as to support community engagement and enhance existing county investments internally in public health and throughout the county. We do anticipate this funding to continue uh, to support efforts through at least June 30th, 2024. I'll turn it back to Bob. 
state funding to continue? These are all state funding. Okay, yes. I just wanted to make sure I caught State that. funding, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Marie. So since the county is working to address climate issues, I want to revisit why a coordinated strategic climate action is important now. Climate action plans are designed to get input from the community so that the county and community can work together to address climate change impacts. As we have shared before, and Marie just referenced, historically marginalized populations in our community are being impacted by climate change now, and the county needs to prepare for future challenges. Scientists recommend coordination, planning, and dedication of sufficient financial resources to implement climate resilience local, resilient local government policies to help slow the impacts of climate change and mitigate risk. This slide shows a word cloud made up of constituent emails received during 2022 that refer to climate change. The number of climate-related emails from county residents increased from less than 10 in 2021 to more than or 50 so far in 2022. This indicates the need to show the community that the county is responding to the climate crisis. In our research, we found that other jurisdictions have adopted a board resolution as a guidepost for this work. Your board adopted a 2029 sustainability resolution, which could be built upon to help solidify and formally support climate work if you choose. One of the reasons constituents contact the county is that Oregon is not currently on track to meet the state's emission reduction goals, nor the recommended international goals. As mentioned earlier, greenhouse gas inventories determine the source and scope of emissions. In this chart of sector-based greenhouse gas emissions from the last Oregon Global Warming Commission report to the legislature, the orange dotted line is the emissions projection with current policies and the bottom or sort of bright green line shows the trajectory needed to meet the state's climate executive order 20-04. State policies are helping to reduce emissions in the electricity sector in particular, but more work is needed in all sectors to reach the goals and lower the impacts of climate change. As you can see, people and organizations in all areas need to commit to taking actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and we want to make sure the county and our community is doing our part. So before I share, uh, share the climate planning scope options, I wanna provide a little background for, on our research. Here I've highlighted the resources my team used for developing options for you today. So we surveyed the members of the Partners for Sustainable Washington County community about their current and planned climate work since coordination with our cities, special districts and utilities will be critical. We heard from other public sector agencies who have recently adopted climate plans or have plans in development. We met internally with key county leaders to learn how to plan for resources to support this project and strategies for project success. And we've started discussions with public health to see how we can align with their climate and environmental health work. This potential for alignment and collaboration was brought to our attention very recently, so we have not had enough time to explore it fully. Please note that our staff has not engaged directly with the community to develop the scope options we are sharing today. We wanted to bring them to you for your consideration and deliberation before seeking any community input. So next I'll share some overarching assumptions that will come into play with any of the plan options we discussed today. First, each plan will utilize an equity framework. This is critical for centering climate justice and helps ensure we are meeting the equity goals of the county. Second, any of our plans will include greenhouse gas inventories as well as climate mitigation actions to ensure we are reducing inputs to climate change. This supports climate and environmental justice in our community and helps us work towards state and federal goals. It also drives the need to bring in outside technical assistance for this project to ensure we are utilizing best practices in this industry and have independent quality control over our data. Third, this pairs with the Washington County Community Engagement Spectrum document included in your board packet. The level of community engagement incre increases from inform to collaborate or co-create as the board suggested previously. Our plan options in the next slide will also increase in the amount of community engagement as we go from one to three. Fourth, we'll be working to ensure these plans are aligned and coordinated with the county's community strategic planning process that is soon to get underway. 
And finally, these plans will be focused on actionable strategies and clear goals for addressing climate change. A key objective of the project will be to ensure the plan is something that we can implement over time and use to tap outside funding resources. So here are the climate action plan scope options that have been developed by county staff for your consideration. Plan option one includes the most basic type of plans focused solely on the mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions to reduce the carbon footprint of the community. The operational plan could be created internally driven by an updated greenhouse gas inventory of county operations. The community plan would require producing a community greenhouse gas inventory, then a community, the community would be engaged in the plan development via the middle options on the community engagement spectrum. Option two is more comprehensive, considering mitigation strategies to reduce climate impact and adaptation strategies to cope with the changing climate. Adaptation is added to include actions that can more quickly address community needs and improve community resilience. Community engagement would be similar to plan option one. However, the community would be informed about operational plans. Option three builds on two, but adds the co-creation of community goals through more collaboration and increases to community involvement in the planning process. It would include more consultation with the community on the county operations plan to ensure alignment. And this option would utilize an advisory council. I'll go into more detail on the next slide to break down the differences and opportunities with each type of plan. So here I've noted the key opportunities and drawbacks with each plan scope. Please note that we are not including any specific goals or strategies as they will be driven by greenhouse gas inventories and they, we want to make sure they reflect the community goals and values. In all options, the operational plan could be developed separately from the community plan and it could be completed quicker. Option one is more streamlined and includes more simpler plans targeted to mitigation strategies. However, it would involve less community engagement and fewer options to address climate change. Option two includes potential for a higher level advisory group and more strategies for addressing climate change. It would include community engagement on the operational plan as well as the community plan. Option three is the most comprehensive choice for addressing community needs. However, it would take the longest and would require the most complex community engagement process. It would include community collaboration and involvement. The operational plan would take longer to develop as well in order to allow consultation with the community. Uh, before I wrap up scope options um, and discuss the resources needed, I'm going to pass it back to David. Yeah, I wanted to provide some context uh, regarding the following slides uh, that will list out the resources or the budget for some of these different activities. And one of the things that we wanted uh, we, meaning Robin and her team, and uh, is to really be intentional about approaching this from a one Washington County uh, lens and really building on the work that's currently happening within the county. Part of that process is how we learned uh, about public health and the opportunities that lie in alignment and in partnership and be transparent. This was a new learning two weeks ago. And so part of what you'll see in the next steps um, is really being able to uh, find time to work through these opportunities that would exist. Um, so again, just to reiterate, the following slides are that, that you'll see are based on best practices and what it would entail for this work to move forward if it was a standalone project, meaning that it was only um, um, being led and, and supported by the, the Office of Sustainability. And so in creating this or building this information, we, that was sort of the lens that, that was used. Um, again, just to reiterate, you know, we haven't yet explored what the opportunities are with public health, but we did wanna bring this information to the board um, as, as part of the, the ask of what um, a plan would look like and what it would involve. Um, so again, you'll be, uh, um, seeing cost and staffing um, needs. Um, and again, 
just reiterating, this doesn't include sort of the cross-departmental um, uh, approach. So here are the options for a climate-focused community advisory committee that could support the plan scopes I shared. The concept of a task force advisory committee um, or group has been raised at recent board meetings focused on climate change. This group should have broad community representation and could play an important role in the community climate plan. They could assess, assist with vendor selection, goal setting, strategy development, and advise on the project. A task force or advisory group, or option one, would be advisory to staff and the project team, at least through the duration of the climate planning process. That type of a group could be less formal than a council that reports to your board. Option one would make the project development process more efficient, flexible, and responsive to community needs by developing plans quicker. On the other hand, option two describes an advisory council or commission, which could be more formal and report to the board. This would elevate the status and visibility of the group to ensure they are functioning in service to the board. However, the more formal group would also require more dedicated staff resources, more time, and, and possibly more funds to be able to manage it. Either type of group would require staff support in the form of multiple individuals to help with group scheduling, facilitating meetings, preparing materials, arranging accommodations, tech support, and more. I've included approximate FTE requirements for each type of group from talking with other county staff. Additionally, I've noted budgetary requirements for the groups based on internal discussions with staff who work with current committees and councils. To round out the scope options, here are estimates based on conversations with local public agencies and contractors completing climate plans. All costs listed here are unbudgeted and would require a decision package in a future, future fiscal year or other types of funding. We are now in the process of assessing whether other departments can provide any resource or staff support to help reduce the budgetary impacts listed here. As you increase in complexity, the amount of time funds and staff needs also increases. This project can be phased to extend the work and costs over at least two fiscal years, so the contract funds would not all be needed at the start of the project. The contract costs are for bringing in one or more consultants to provide technical expertise, project guidance, inventory assistance, quality assurance, and to help lead engagement. Please note that the projects, any project with advisory groups and community consultation move forward at the pace determined by the community or the speed of trust. So while we can estimate a timeline, every organization we asked about climate plans noted that the process took longer than they thought it would take. Additionally, higher levels of community engagement increased the cost of the project and the need for additional FTE as noted here. Providing language interpretation services, stipends, or food during community meetings adds to the cost of this work. So the Office of Sustainability currently has three highly skilled FTE that can pivot to do this new work. In order to accommodate that, any of these options will require us to change our programming, though. We would need to reduce staff education, departmental technical, department technical assistance, our durable dish loan program, and any projects with low climate mitigation potential. All scope options presented would require staff, more staff support dedicated to this work for the community planning portion due to the greater complexity of the work and the need for staff with additional skills and community engagement and program coordination. Staff would help with the plan writing, community engagement, project management, and ultimately with plan implementation, monitoring progress, and evaluation of our plans. To wrap up, I've noted our planned next steps for this project. We will look for opportunities with al for alignment with public health, work underway, and assess whether there are resources to support this work. We'll seek additional collaboration internally, and then we will come back to your board in early 2023 to provide an update with recommendations. That's all I have for you today. Commissioners, why don't we start with questions? I can kick us off with a question if you'd like. On slide 17, Climate Action Advisory Committee options, uh, I'm just wondering, since this is talking about uh, a scale of, you know, an advisory group versus, a, you know, full-fledged 
adopted boarding commission. Is this has this been vetted with OECIE? OEICE, sorry, I knew it. I got it wrong. OEICE. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, the so staff, the yep, general the staff team did vet that uh, with OEICE. Really, the most recent example we have to learn from what um, an advisory council option two on the screen would be is acre. And so that's really where the learning has occurred. Um, the timing, not just from calendaring meetings, but to food, to stipends, and also ensuring materials. The, the materials, also integration with I agenda. We're in this learning, and so that's not just one FTE, but it's spread across multiple. But that's what we're. It adds up to a half Correct. of an FTE yep. total. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Could I? Yeah. On on that question, so yeah, I, I looked up the um, the Public Health Advisory Committee just just to try to understand what sure. the, what they are in comparison to these, and they're board appointed and it's an advisory committee to the board. So I assume that group would fit into uh, number two, I think for, so. for example, in, in comparison. And, and does that require the same amount of support? Did we, did we look internally to see if that group required the same amount of support that would be in this number two? I didn't investigate that one, but I looked at the garbage and recycling advisory committee, which I think is would fall into that same group. That's good. Idea. Um, and yes. And not all of our board and commissions are organized to our standard practice of using I agenda and whatnot, but we do require all new ones start there. Well, and I think maybe um, commission groups that are actively engaged in a critical issue might and I think about GRAC as being one one of those so thank you for that I didn't think about them that that answered my question I have a similar question with the uh, along Robin David Marie great presentations um I the F the point five FTE on this slide if you go to the next slide um is that in addition to any of these options? No, that would be included within the 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 plus one, the, the bottom bullet on each of the ref costs. So it will be, for example, option two, let's say option uh -huh. two, we're looking at plus one FTE. That will be then we're talking about 1.5 FTE. No, I'd be talking about one. So that 0.5 would be part of that that new FTE I see. Position, and then we would shift our work to cover the other 0.5. Okay. I want to be clear shift means stopping certain internally facing current sustainability work and shifting pivoting to the scope. Yeah. Wait a minute. You're saying we need one point FTE in, and then we'll also have staff that will be stopping yes, something they're yes. doing. Repurposing yeah. those staff. And the plus. three of us would be repurposed to support mm -hmm. this work primarily. And so in total, then this isn't one FTE, then we're talking about more than one FTE. So what, what are we talking about then? So what I'm talking about is we already you already have three FTE that can sh shift to support this work, but we would need the equivalent of another one FTE to, to really facilitate the projects. And are some of the discussions looking at public health as supporting that additional work? I, I'm just asking for, so I understand, or, or are these all new dollars that aren't, that would have to come out of general fund? That's- Well, I think part of your answer is right there in the next steps. Yeah. spend the coming weeks and discussion. And that's why I use the word potential. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the things that we're looking at potential, right? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Therese and um, Chair Harrington. Uh, yes. So um, that is what we intend to do is to uh, have more opportunities to engage and look at to see what staff we have on our team um, that are already supporting, for example, our FAC. Uh, 
our FAC um, staff member is supported currently by general funds, also supports our public health accreditation and some other efforts. Mm -hmm. So that staff potentially could provide some support um, if we were to look at having a public health advisory board or a subcommittee serve as part of uh, the support structure for the committees. Um, I, I do appreciate um, also the opportunity to look at our other staffing uh, positions uh, and the resources available. Modernization um, is not intended to be just internally focused. It is a state funding that it provides us flexible resources to support um, internally across the county as well as uh, support the community. Um, I would like to note that the Public Health Advisory Board um, or Advisory Council is a statutory obligation of the local public health authority and has a, a specific role to advise uh, the governing body, which is of the local public health authority, which is the board here, uh, in terms of policy. And so part of public health modernization changed the relationship um, between the Public Health Advisory Council and the commissioners, the roles of the Public Health Advisory Council. Uh, so they used to be a board of health, but um, it's not a board of health that they're uh, supporting. So it's more of a policy making and that's outlined in the statute. So I'd be happy to bring back um, some revisions uh, that were made as part of public health modernization, to the way our FAC supports the commissioners and how the commissioners support uh, Washington County as the local public health authority. Thank you. So um, I'll start if you don't mind. Right ahead. I want to first uh, start by thanking my policy assistant, Daniel Nava, for helping me revisit this topic. As noted in the presentation, uh, this board has taken steps through prior work sessions and presentations from the Washington County uh, team and clean water services to better understand uh, what climate work is all about and how we might proceed. Um, I, for one, am uh, quite mindful of the fact that the state legislature has uh, set greenhouse gas targets for our state at least as far back as 2005 and took additional definition steps in subsequent legislative actions. And here we are 17 years later, um, our region did an extraordinary amount of work uh, on uh, efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector, but also looking at our land use and the state legislature has not put its muscle behind that uh, extensive work. So when it comes to the idea of studying GHG further, doing GHG inventories, I have to say, I just don't have the patience for it. What uh, some of the comments that I'm about to share are very similar, if not a repeat of what I uh, shared with all of you back in July. Um, for the proposals that have been provided here, there were three outlined and I actually would uh, like to prefer a fourth. And that is that we set aside mitigation and that we start with adaptation. And we do so uh, in service to community and completely pivot as these proposals do our current uh, internal resourcing and to pivot it away from our internal and sustainability operations over to looking at climate adaptation in service and support to our community. Uh, and uh, related to that, seek input or uh, information on best practices for adaptation with goals of reducing deaths, reducing harm, and reducing economic impact of climate change. Um, and as laid out here, you know, what is climate adaptation and what is resilience? If, if you 
look to a different model, crawl, walk, run. I think we've got to start crawling and walking before we proceed with running. Uh, I, and I think there's work not only with public health, but also with our emergency management team to really assess how prepared are we as a community serving agency to help advance our community, especially our most vulnerable and our historically economic, economically disadvantaged in order to be better able to adapt to all to the various effects, heat, ice, you know, the things that we have seen advance in terms of capability over these last two years alone. Uh, but really look at how we are going to take a serious look organizationally on where we stand. We may excel in some ways and we may have gaps in others. And to use a committee uh, as a focus group, right? As an, a task force or advisory group to help inform us uh, and to learn from that so that at a minimum, over the next five years, as events continue, we can say with confidence that we have advanced our capabilities. And then, at, and at the same time, continue to pr press at the state and the federal levels that if they want us to do further work, great. Resource us to do that because we are stretched to do the basics for general government and other mandated uh, community service needs. So, um, uh, so I think fundamentally, I'm hoping that we'll be focusing first on helping our communities live with climate change and uh, advance environmental justice uh, amongst our community members. So to me, that's much more relatable than uh, I've in my prior government uh, service chapter. Yes, we did a GHG inventory. We did a whole bunch of GHG work that is totally non-relatable. And I very much want us to do work that is relatable by our community members. That's where I'm... I'm at a, an earlier fourth step, <laughs> a step zero compared to, uh, or an option zero compared to these three. May I ask a couple questions? Just of course. And mostly of, of, of you, <laughs> because, and this is my naivete about this, and you are much more steeped in your experience at Metro and other places, and I take your guidance as well. The, um, when you say focus on adaptation, not mitigation, in, in my mind, mitigation means like working on our fuel sourcing for our uh, fleet. I tried to work with the definitions on slide six. Okay, well, but I'm trying to, I've read- Mitigation, crawl, adaptation, walk, resilience, run. Is that, no. yeah, I, I understand that, but that doesn't mean we would stop doing those things. Isn't that correct? I think we've been spending an awful lot of energy on those obvious ones before of changing the fleet over and so internally. And I think we need to move beyond that. And, and we, that means it. But we, it, it means moving from our internal operations and looking at what is the effect of climate change on our community and getting pre better prepared us as an agency and our communities to deal with those effects. We haven't done that. We could do all this other work. And if we haven't done that, we're, we're gonna have people dying and people harmed. And I, and I think that another piece of what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is the sphere of influence and the sphere of control. Yeah. 
and what can we and and I think that that's another important factor as yeah. we as we look at this. Yeah. So um and I and I would apply that concept to the adaptation category and it just be, if we're if we're moving to adaptation that doesn't mean we stop doing the other things that you've done. No, I today. assume I assume that all that is learned and done departments shouldn't need to be reminded to go and try to use electrification over fossil fuel vehicles but you will, you will need mitigation in every step but i think adaptation should be the driving like factor the next you're gonna need mitigation in every step to actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and address source of climate change. I'm saying let's first focus on changing processes to live with the climate change that we are living with today. My understanding is you can't, I, I think we have experts in this, so I'm not gonna pretend, but I don't think you can skip over mitigation and jumped into the processes. Um, but I'm not saying you could do one or the other. Um, but Robin, what's your um, opinion on mitigation versus in terms of when do you need in every step? And I'm asking your expert opinion, not necessarily your what is the best practice, basically. Best, I don't want to put best, you in uncomfortable. Best practice is that any climate action plan has mitigation in it, period. Adaptation is not always included in a climate action plan. Thank you. So where would we put tree keepers in the work that they're doing? So For trees example. trees are one of those things that are in the Venn diagram of adaptation and mitigation. They're actually in the middle. Okay. that's Because they're... Oh, they're a little bit of both, um, but literally the amount of trees that you would need to add to Washington County to sequester the amount of carbon that we need to reduce is not terribly practical. So, and I'm it's not a, it's a it's a one of many mm -hmm. um, actions that can be taken. So it would be adaptation as as well as it mitigates, mitigate. but it's also adapting. It's and it, changing it can process. provide both. As long as you can plant big enough trees that actually provide shade and cooling. Um, so it's not something that happens fast, like putting in an EV charging station is immediately usable. A tree doesn't exactly provide the same benefits when it's newly planted. So there's different, just it's sort of a spectrum. So I think what I'm hearing is on slide with the three options, there's the three options. I hear the chair asking for another option, which is a climate. Those are three climate action plans and is asking for a climate adaptation plan as an option. But the, but the important thing I think about what you said is the community engagement that addresses adaptation. Am I, is that fair? Yeah, I, I said, yep. Let them clear in July too, yep. Community is part of it. If I may, I'd like to offer that I think that's part of the benefit of us exploring additional conversations because public health is charged with developing uh, a climate adaptation plan, which centers equity, it centers metrics, health equity metrics, and um, all hazards planning. So it has all three of those. And I think that we would be able to help support um, sustainability coming back with additional information and options uh, for your board. I would suggest that you look at it cross organizationally as well and make sure that other depart you tap into other departments, they should be able to relate to this as well. I'm I think um my comment is I'm um, I think I don't really have problem with just focusing on mitigations, uh, but I also want to see what you guys come back with the next steps and not 
um, put on a, another plan, but just wait and see what your learning is to come back. And so I'm comfortable with the next step, see what I'm saying, to wait. And if we need to revisit and say, we need that option zero or that third, fourth option, so I'm, um, then we can have that conversation. Um, I will say I'm in agreement with the chair that uh, the idea of a task force and community focus is really important as you uh, know and heard uh, people are really asking. Um, the reason why I'm hesitant on that option zero is um, I'm, I do believe the best practices. I'm not sure how we can um, you know, not focus on the drivers of climate change. So that's my hesitation. Other than that, um, I'm... Uh, the, one, the one thing I'd add is, I think we have to look at where we can make the most impact and how we can, um, how we can address the, the community needs. So that, that's, that's what I'd put out there. And I think that um, the biggest, again, that goes back to sphere of influence, sphere of control. And adaptation is where we've got, we, we do have that um, control. So a thumbs up for me for, for next steps, and as it is with these options, but. So I'm not today thumbs up on moving forward with any expectation that we have any more resources for this than what we currently have from the three FTE. So I don't think we're in a position to um, to take on more, given what we already know about our budget circumstances. So I'd like to see in the next steps uh, coming up with an, an option on adaptation and setting up at least an advisory committee uh, for that. And what you, what can you do with the resources that you already have, Ms. Angie? I support no new dollars, and I think, and what that means to me is yeah. that it's we don't take more, but we look at what all of our resources are, and see what opportunities we have to combine those. So I, in contrast, I'm, I might not limit it to three if if public health can support or if other departments can support. That's not for me to say. That's yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that I'm looking forward to the new discussions. Commissioner Rogers, I'm listening a lot. It's um, it's probably one of the few things that we can leave our children and grandchildren and uh, is an environment that we we're uh, finding ourselves in. So we are all grappling with a very difficult issue, the driver issue. I, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I know that China is emitting more carbon the United States and, and England, uh, the United Kingdom is combined. And they're building more coal plants every day than we'll ever be able to deal with. And so um, it's a very troubling issue when you look at it globally. And if we had big screens up in the air and their air didn't come this way, we could deal with it, if, but we are one universe. So it, it's, it's very hard. I also um, understand that we want to do lots of things. About a year and a half ago, I said we're in trouble financially in terms of what we want to do with what our resources are. And this board is uh, certainly uh, hearing echoing those sentiments. And I know uh, I know you uh, as CEO have written some letters. I, I, I don't know what it really means when you say, I'm going to take these three folks and I'm going to take them off of other things. And um, if the other things weren't that important, why do we have three folks doing them? Uh, and you're going to say, but they were important. Well, that means that there's a hole somewhere. And uh, frankly, I'll be a Christmas Grinch and say it again. We cannot maintain our ongoing operations with the resources we have. We cannot maintain our employee base with the resources we have. 
And so I, if, if that's what I'm hearing, and I heard two of the commissioners over here say, well, if we can somehow do it, okay, then I almost get back to zero based budgeting and say, well, what are you taking away? And if you're saying it wasn't that important, then why are we doing it today? Uh, this is a troubling time, and it's going to be a troubling time, not just in the year 2022 three. It's going to be 24 and five and six. I mean, this is an ongoing problem. Take a billion four, do a real easy calculation. You've got about a two to three percent spread per year in your revenue base from your expenditures. And that's you know, 40, 30, 40 million a year. And that didn't want to get any better. So I applaud the staff for your taking it very seriously on the financials. I applaud you for the work. I, I, what child, what child do I like better? I, you know, that's a hard case. I mean, do I save the future, which I hope that we do? At the same time, do I deprive us of other resources we need? It's uh, it's rambling, but I I understand the zero concept. I understand the mitigation. I don't really get how we affect the global economy other through diplomacy and trying to convince others. It's, it's insane. <laughs> keep on doing what we're doing, but um, if they're not gonna listen, then we have to go to the mitigation route. What else can we do? I mean, that's what we're gonna do, uh, uh, figure out how we how we live with this problem and how we tell people what sources we're gonna have available. So all of that uh, didn't mean a lot other than I, I'm troubled by it and I, I look forward to what you all are gonna come back with. So. I do wanna say thank you because the one piece that I see that um, that's in here that that wasn't before is that community involvement piece, and it's in everything here and everything that you said, Robin. Everything here, and I I really appreciate that. So that's that's very important to me that that we've got that type of engagement, we've got that type of uh, uh, look, so that um, the community feels that they have a voice. We've heard it loud and clear everywhere we go. So, and that's important. And I just kind of summarize next steps as I as I've heard them. So um, I just want to echo um, that I appreciate the board's um, thoughtfulness and deliberation in this. Um, just because you have a passion um, for a subject or you think it's important, we also need to align that with the resources we have available to operate within. And that's the construct we're facing here. And so that's not that's about determining how priorities of services and what we can do now to maintain our current service level to the community. So moving forward, staff will continue to be working in a one Washington County approach, utilize, looking at how we can leverage um, the public health modernization dollars from the state, um, uh, look at what an um, adaptation plan option looks like in comparison to the other options. In addition, I am hearing um, for follow-up information um, as our sustainability manager had outlined, uh, there would be redirection of staff. So what are we gonna stop doing? I wanna say to get through this situation that we are facing at the county with the general fund, we must stop doing things. So this is a very healthy conversation to really continue to exam what can we stop doing? Because our community changes, needs change. So developing that muscle is important. That's not judging what we did before. It's judging the time that we face now. So those will be the next steps. And um, I really do appreciate also um, in the background uh, information in the packet, uh, Mr. Martinez had lifted this up, but the county is doing significant work in this space. So there is much climate work that we do need to celebrate. So we'll come back to your board um, in quarter one of 2023 um, with what those final next steps would look like. <laughs> 